Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Today, we kick off with another entrant into the open source AI LLM battle. And this time, it comes from Stability AI, the company, of course, behind Stable Diffusion. Confirming that these guys grew up at the same time as I did, the model is called Free Willy. The model technically comes from Stability AI and its Carper AI lab, and it's actually two separate models, Free Willy 1 and Free Willy 2. Free Willy 1 is based on the original Llama 65 billion foundation model, but was fine-tuned with a synthetically generated dataset, while Free Willy 2 leverages the Llama 70 billion foundation model, and they say that the performance after fine-tuning of Free Willy 2 actually compares favorably with GPT 3.5 in some tasks. In a lot of ways, these models represent a test of new training approaches. Stability AI writes in their announcement post, the training for the Free Willy models was directly inspired by the methodology pioneered by Microsoft in its paper, ORCA, Progressive Learning from Complex Explanation Traces of GPT-4. Now, they show a number of different comparisons of performance evaluations, and in a number of areas, including the LSAT's logical reasoning and the LSAT's analytical reasoning, as well as the SAT English, Free Willy 2 actually compares favorably to ChatGPT, which is GPT-3.5. Stability AI writes, quote, both models are research experiments and are released to foster open research under a non-commercial license. While we have conducted internal red teaming to ensure the model remains polite and harmless, we welcome the community's feedback and help in further red teaming. In a separate tweet, Ahmad, the CEO of Stability AI, said that when they were ready for commercial release, they would likely do something pretty similar to the terms surrounding Llama 2. Now, speaking of Llama 2, Meta has received a little bit of criticism over the last couple days for calling Llama 2 open source. On the Voices of Open Source blog, a post reads Meta's Llama 2 license is not open source. The piece starts, OSI is pleased to see that Meta is lowering barriers for access to powerful AI systems. Unfortunately, the tech giant has created the misunderstanding that Llama 2 is open source. It is not. Even assuming the term can be validly applied to a large language model comprising several resources of different kinds, Meta is confusing open source with resources available to some users under some conditions, two very different things. The piece goes on, open source means software under a license with specific characteristics defined by the open source definition. Among other requirements for a license to be open source, it may not discriminate against persons or groups or fields of endeavor. Meta's license for the Llama models and code does not meet this standard. Specifically, it puts restrictions on commercial use for some users and also restricts the use of the model and software for certain purposes. Later in the piece, they write, OSI does not question Meta's desire to limit the use of Llama for competitive purposes, but doing so takes the license out of the category of open source. The OSD does not allow restrictions on field of use because you can't know beforehand what can happen in the future, good or bad. That's what allows the Linux kernel to become popular in medical devices as well as airplanes and rockets. But the Meta policy prohibits use in several areas that might be highly beneficial to society, such as regulated and controlled substances and use for critical infrastructure. Even something that sounds as simple as you must follow the law is problematic in practice. What if the law in different places is inconsistent? What if the law is unjust? So basically the piece isn't so much a critique of the way that Meta is releasing this, in fact it validates them, it just wants to be precise about language because they argue language matters. Decibel partner and latent space host Alessio Finelli also wrote a piece about this called Llama 2 is an open source and why it doesn't matter. He writes, when Llama 2 came out, many of the folks I respect in the community were upset about misusing the term open source when referring to the model. While it's mostly open, there are caveats such as you can't use the model commercially if you had more than 700 million monthly active users as of the release date, and you cannot use the model output to train another large language model. Alessio continues, these types of restrictions don't play well with the open source ethos. But while I agree that Llama 2 cannot be called open source in the traditional meaning of the world, I also think that it doesn't matter. The term open source needs to evolve once again in the world of AI models. Alessio then goes on to point out how many different aspects of an LLM could be released with different levels of openness, and ultimately comes to the inclusion that, quote, the important thing is that more and more of this work is done as openly as possible. Now, of course, if you listen to the AI breakdown over the weekend, you heard me do a long reads all about this idea of open source AI and whether it actually creates new challenges in terms of safety. In a slightly different AI safety topic, OpenAI's head of trust and safety, Dave Wilner, has stepped down. In a note on LinkedIn, Wilner wrote, Some bittersweet news to share. I'm leaving OpenAI as an employee and transitioning into an advisory role. Now, Dave pointed to family time and specifically wanting to spend more time with their young children as the reason, and as someone with young kids, I totally get it, but that hasn't stopped there from being lots of speculation around whether there is something more going on. 
Now, it's actually kind of interesting to me how much hay is being made of this, with a very extensive TechCrunch piece being written about it that goes deep into Wilner's personal history with this, not only at OpenAI, but also at previous employers, including Facebook. And I think that this probably reflects just how hot button this question of AI safety is right now. Of course, last week at the end of the week, we got that announcement from the White House that seven companies, including OpenAI, along with Meta, Microsoft, Google, and others, had all committed to a set of voluntary principles around AI governance. At the time I last recorded about it, a few companies had started to release statements, but we've gotten a few more since then. OpenAI published a piece called Moving AI Governance Forward. OpenAI and other leading labs reinforce AI safety, security, and trustworthiness through voluntary commitments. OpenAI's note is mostly a further articulation of what it intends to do specifically around the commitment areas that had been previously articulated by the White House. One interesting note is that OpenAI makes sure to define the scope. It says where commitments mention particular models, they only apply to generative models that are overall more powerful than the current industry frontier, e.g. models that are overall more powerful than any currently released models, including GPT-4, Claude 2, Palm 2, Titan, and in the case of image generation, Dolly 2. So effectively, they're saying that this commitment is about the stuff coming down the pipeline, not the stuff that already exists today. Inflection, the company behind Pi, also wrote a note about their commitment. The piece was called The Precautionary Principle, partnering with the White House on AI safety. Again, mostly it's just an announcement, but one paragraph that was interesting is where they said, Speaking plainly, there's a huge amount of safety work ahead. So far, AI safety has been stuck in the space of ideas and meetings, stuck in bureaucratic wrangling, stuck in academic journals, stuck in breathless op-eds and Twitter threads. The amount of tangible progress versus hype and panic has been insufficient. At inflection, we find this both concerning and frustrating. That's why safety is at the heart of our mission, why we founded the company in the first place, and why we are working flat out to make it happen. Later in the post, they say we will soon publish further work on safety and announce a number of significant collaborations. They then call out the example of elections as an area of specific focus. At inflection, they write, we believe it is vital that AI be kept out of the democratic process. Powerful but still nascent technology cannot be a part of electioneering. We should legislate to ban the use of AIs and chatbots around the ballot box. Next year is an election year in America, and it will be the first in the era of generative AI. Preserving the stability and integrity of our electoral system means starting work right now. Now, one more very different announcement around ChatGPT. It is now making its mobile app, which up till now has been only available on iOS, available for Android users as well. Lastly, a little bit of AI intrigue in the transition away from the Twitter brand. Over the weekend, Elon Musk announced, quote, and soon we shall bid adieu to the Twitter brand and gradually all the birds. The brand, of course, is becoming X to better align with Elon's big vision of an everything app. And yesterday afternoon, new CEO of X or Twitter or whatever it is now, Linda Yaccarino, wrote a thread where she talked about the new business. Linda writes, it's an exceptionally rare thing in life or in business that you get a second chance to make another big impression. Twitter made one massive impression and changed the way we communicate. Now X will go further, transforming the global town square. X is the future state of unlimited interactivity, centered in audio, video, messaging, payments, and banking, creating a global marketplace for ideas, goods, services, and opportunities. Powered by AI, X will connect us all in ways we're just beginning to imagine. For years, fans and critics alike have pushed Twitter to dream bigger, to innovate faster, and to fulfill our great potential. X will do that and more. We've already started to see X take shape over the past eight months through our rapid feature launches, but we're just getting started. There's absolutely no limit to this transformation. X will be the platform that can deliver, well, everything. Elon and I are looking forward to working with our teams and every single one of our partners to bring X to the world. Now, of course, the part that the AI crowd picked up on was this powered by AI. X will connect us all in ways we're just beginning to imagine. So I will close today's AI Breakdown Brief with a question. What do you think X will do, and specifically... What does it mean that it will be powered by AI? Leave a comment to tell me what you think or come join us on the AI Breakdown Discord. You can find a link at bit.ly slash AI Breakdown. Thanks for listening or watching as always, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.